Hey folks, I'm Deeg. Welcome to the Deeg Podcast. Chatting with Commander Sirius. What's up, brother? Deeg, how you been, man? Great to see you. Oh man, it's good to see you too, dude. We haven't talked in like, I mean, like, uh, yeah, we, we connected a couple times last year over random planet side stuff, but the last time we podcasted was like a year and a half ago. I know, it goes fast, doesn't it? How the hell are you? I'm good, man. Um... It was fun. It was exciting beginning of last year. It was really kicking it off. And then uh, I kind of slowed down a little bit at the end because I got super busy. But um, yeah, it was a great year. How was your year? Oh, man. Every year is better than the last. Hard to <laughs> complain. Uh, yeah, that's just good. Working on making a better dig. It, it, uh, there you go. It's a work in progress. <laughs> that's all you can do. Absolutely. You got, like a, you got like the ghost runner on the track behind you, right? From last year trying to get... A little bit better. Yeah, you know, I think that's true. I think that's true. And yeah. I, I think I think we can call it a good year if we can look at the Ghost Runner and be like, yeah, a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about that? You feel like you're a little bit better than last year? I do. I feel like I came out of that year a little more exhausted than usual, but uh. with with plenty of with plenty of stuff to show for it. So I didn't feel like it was at all wasted or anything like that. So like uh what are some of the things? I'm curious. Um yeah, it was uh it was a good year. We are it's funny, and this happened right at the end of last year, so probably it probably exhausted me a little bit more, but I don't know if you see on the news, I live very close to the Marshall Fire. Oh no, I don't know anything about that. So out in Colorado we had a wildfire get close to us and take down a thousand homes. Oh shit. Um so it was it was just to cap off a house and I happen to be a builder, so all of a sudden, you know, everything just kinda blows oh, up my on God. you. But it was it was an exciting year, already very busy. Uh, and doing work, and then uh, I'm getting into some real estate on the side. Okay, that's uh, that's an interesting, exciting proposition. Also, very taxing, you know, and all that stuff. So uh -huh. it was good. Like uh, I feel like I made forward progress, but I definitely feel like at the end of the year, I was just like, Ugh. do you uh, really need more stuff to I'm, do? Serious? I, I don't. I, I really think don't. I think you don't have enough hobbies. What should we come up with for series for 2022? I know. I don't know. <laughs> Throw them at me. I wish. I, <laughs> I should have pulled your chat up, but I didn't want to distract me. But eh, it's all good. They ain't talking about anything yet. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, yeah, no, I, I think I've got enough right now. How about all right. You? Anything, uh, anything fun for you on the side that you? Um, well, let's think. Uh, I, oh, I got a new job, so that was that oh. was overdue. Congrats, overdue. man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's like I've been at the last job for. I had been there for a little over four years, and. But the first okay. couple of years were really great. You know, it was like, yep. I was really in sync with what the job needed me to be. And I was like progressing along. And then you get to a certain point where it's like, oh, there's a glass ceiling here and a glass ceiling here. Yeah. And yep. Maybe in the, at the first start, you want to point fingers and be like, oh man, if only that person got their act together, or that person got their act together. There's this problem. But it's right, right. every different place you go is going to have different limiting factors like that. And yep. yep. Eventually I was like, okay, it's time to find a new one. Yeah, and it's always a little intimidating, but that's awesome that you took you took yeah. the step. Good job, I hate, man. Good I job. hate change like that. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's tough. It's nerve wracking. But yeah, no, it's good. Um, and uh, I took up baking. I mean, sort of. I okay. baked my very nice. first thing ever. Um. Oh, cool. What was it? Yeah. No, I went through a little bit of a, a gamer existential crisis at the end of last year. And okay. Yeah. I realized I'd been fooling myself for for twenty years with the way I've been playing video games. And okay. I just had to stop, and I didn't know what to do with myself. So I was like, "I guess I'll bake my grandma's cookies." <laughs> okay. So that's nice. that's what I did, and I'm proud to say that they're like 96 percent as good as what she made. I think they're pretty close. Wow, that's an impressive first run. It took, it took that's, me that's, well. That's a it took a few batches. It took a few. Okay. Batches. Okay. 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 There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's a high bar. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, cool. Good man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Okay. Well, I know we don't have a lot of time series. Your time is super valuable, as is obvious. Uh, but, man, there is a little bit of an elephant in the room I got to talk to you about. You know? Yeah. We're, we're here. We're, we're talking as planet men do. Mm -hmm. And a lot went down in the planet side community last year, starting off with Outfit yeah. Wars. Yeah. And you, you were front and center for it. And refaction drama, R18 pigs, yeah. the, the tank. The unspoken yeah. code of conduct. Yeah. And then 
And then that crazy ass effort you did to get the night sh the, the, the night cr late crew and night shift. Oh man, I can't remember what what it is exactly. L late crew, you got late, it. late crew. crew. I knew it was some yeah. combination. But get yep. the late crew bringing all those viewers to planet side and the observer cam oh, uh, fiasco. I, I said it wrong too. You were right. It was late shift. So <laughs> I screwed it up too. They, they, they think they might need a new name. I think yeah, we're not the only yeah. ones to make that mistake. It's got to be right. Yeah. And then. And that was a great little drama. I had your back. I knew that you did the right thing, despite all the haters. And, Thanks, you know, man. one of the, one of the other, oh, absolutely, dude. Like, you're in a rough position. You did the best you could with what you had at hand. Yep. And yep. all through all of this controversy, one of the other really big voices in the, in the, in the game is Shockter. The Shock Doctor yeah. of Planet Side 2. Crushing it. He had a massive year last year. Yeah. Yeah, and he yeah. he's a I count I count him among you know um, I got this great question um, in the Q and A did at the start of the year from one of my one of my producers. He asked, um, "What's it like being friends with people on so many different sides of the community? Is it hard?" And my answer was, "No, it's not hard because I'm getting to know people." Yeah, I'm getting That's to know people. Question. And but something happened. I saw something. At the end of one of your videos, it made me think I didn't really know what was going on. Like, I didn't really know yeah. there was something really important that I was missing. And, yeah. it, and I, I, I rewatched your conversation you did with Aflick and Schachter and, uh, and yourself, um, reviewing Outfit Wars and um, talking about the experience and especially, like, uh, the, the falling out on the Arshi stream. Yeah. And then at the end of your video that you that you that you called um what was the name of that video? Use your notes, Deeg. Setting the record straight. Setting the record straight. Oh. You called out Shockter. Yeah. And you said there's only one person on this screen that came to Planet Side 2 just to farm partner and that gives no fuck about fucks about this game. And that's the pussy caster that's screaming, referring to Shockter. Thank you for getting yeah. that hypocrite shit out of here. And after what seemed like a reconciliation between y'all, I don't, I don't get where that comes from. Yeah. Now I want to turn it over to you, man. What's, what was that about? Tell us. Yeah, absolutely. Brother serious. Um, yeah. I, uh, now, Shockter nails exactly some content this community wants. And it's awesome. I would, for most of the last year, he was the number one content creator, at least on Twitch. Um, and I think he would be that this year if he, if he wants to. Um, so he does awesome stuff. A technique he used a lot was kind of throw shit at someone, whether it was Rel or me, and then reconcile later. And mm. I have no problem reconciling, but I still demand that you stand behind your statement. Hmm. And that is, if you're going to throw either Archie or me, uh, under the bus like that, that we're just here for that, um, then you got to stand by that same principle. Okay. Um, and you can't let your, your streaming direction slip. Say, say you happen to be doing a really high percent of planet, planet side. And during that period, you get partner and then you kind of decide you want to do something else. That's fine. I just don't think it's fair to call someone else out just because we kind of buried the hatchet on that one topic. I don't think you could ever let that idea slip. Mm -hmm. Archie never promised that he was just a planet side streamer. Right. He loved the community. He played in Aftershocks. He played. He, he's not He's not a phony. He played at launch. I was in command chat with him two years after. He was one of the leaders of a Aftershocks. He was Calypso. We mm -hmm. were out there communicating. He is no planet side phony. Mm -hmm. um, but just because he decides that he wants to go on another game, that doesn't mean he was just here to do one thing. Mm -hmm. He was here because he loved it, because he loved the community. Sure, he's trying to take a swing at it. That's great. Aren't most of us, like, deep down inside? If If, if tomorrow... All of a sudden, I was streaming to 2,000 viewers average. Do you think I'd stay at my main job? No, no. If I, don't if, imagine if I made it, if, if I made it, I'd bounce. Like, I'm just here. But at the same time, while I'm here, I'm not just here for that. I'm here because I love it, because it's a wonderful hobby. It kind of, it's my place where I center myself after all the other hectic stuff in life. So yeah. Yeah. I don't think just because uh, I kind of explained the situation, we buried the hatchet, excuses coming after someone like that. And that's why I feel like, I feel like it was a reasonable shot to take because someone swung at me. I hear you. That makes sense. Let me let me say it back to you to make sure I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it sounds like this is rooted in sort of authenticity. So 
the thing that Shockter said, and I think I have his lovely rant scribbled down. I won't say all of it, but basically, <laughs> to put it to summarize, they care. Now, this is this is this happened when you were a guest on Archie's stream, and following an out the outfit wars where where pigs and R eighteen tanked against uh, recursion, and yes. created a and, and I. I and I just want to add on there because yeah, this yeah. always gets skipped because okay. people don't like Picard and people don't like Pale Targer. Dim Giant mm. and Dark did the exact same thing. Okay. So I, what I what Less I don't famously. like is it feels like exact, but they did the exact same thing. What I don't like is people grab the two people they hate and point they're the bad thing and mm. then completely skip some more beloved outfits that did the exact same thing, but they don't get the hate. Interesting. That, the Tiger Zerg or the Picard Zerg gets. So anyway, right. I just want to add that in there. But yes, keep keep laying it out. No, Sorry. no, it's actually good you said that because I actually forgot the same thing. Like that wasn't front of mind. There's a lot of details yep. to hang on to. We only hang on to the stuff that seems the, the most salient. It's like George Washington founded the United States of America. Well, did he really? Well, he was one of the guys there, but he's the one right. everyone remembers because over time you retell the story, you retell the story. And only the really standout individuals remain, right? And so Pale yep, Tiger yep. is is yep. always there at the end of the conversation. <laughs> yep. uh, it, it was interesting, um, actually, in rewatching that conversation where you explain the Connery culture, um, which if we had longer, I'd ask you to, to repeat here, but I'll just briefly summarize it if you don't mind. But basically, yep. the whole team up culture was really is really like a old hat on Connery, and and yeah. and Pale Tiger and the Space Pigs were the were the ones who started it. It was their idea, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and then there was a response: the Kestrel Accords, as they're as mm -hmm. they're referred to, and so mm -hmm. to the point where when you saw on Archie's stream this happened, it's it was bad, but also it was kind of old hat for you as an old school Connery guy, and I was also you were unshocked. You I was were so just like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I don't. I don't mean to steal your thunder, man. Um, no, 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 go ahead. And so when. Shockter was live reacting to you being a guest on Archie stream. Oh my god, I'm sorry. It's so complicated. People don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I, know. I know. This must be bewildering if you're not a planet side <laughs> uh, community, whatever. But um, Shockter called out you and Archie for not putting the screws to Renegade 18 and Pale Tiger and the Space Pigs in that post game interview. And said something like, they don't care about the game. All they care about is number of viewers getting donos and subs. They're, and they basically that they're just farming drama. They don't care about the game. Essentially attacking the authenticity of what you and Arshi were doing there. Now, mm -hmm. later, there was all kinds of follow-up communication, this, especially from you. I even heard you say um, that you had a similar feeling. To shocked her, like upset about what was going on, but that you didn't feel like you could respond. Um, anyway, I don't want to get too buried in all the details. Authenticity seems like it's the thing. I'm really trying to understand this. And it sounds like, well, first off, before I kind of cinch it together, at least in my mind, the way I'm hearing it, does it, it, everything I say sound correct so far? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. You're okay. nailing it. Cool. Um, and then. Shockter, the most successful Planet Site 2 streamer, the only streamer to use it to get Twitch partner, I think, and maybe ever. I don't even know. Um, yeah. Uh, plays the game, goes hard on it, and then he takes a break. He peels back. He's not doing as much Planet Site content. He's doing more variety stuff. And he came back, I think, at the start of this year, like right before the, yeah. the start of the Osher drop. Sim um, yep. Similar yep. To, to me, I did the same thing. I took a break from Planet Side, and with the new release, I get excited. I want to be part of what's going on. It seems like what you're saying is that his um, peeling back from being an active Planet Side streamer was a knock on his authenticity. It meant that he he had no right, and that he was knocking on Arshi for the same thing that he himself was uh, doing. Yeah, that, the, you're you're, you're absolutely nail on the head. And I will okay. put out there, I don't think, I'm going off in a little caveat, I don't think any streamer is obligated to stream any game. I think they should stream what they want to. Uh -huh. um, so I'm not I'm not advocating that since the community supported him, you know, we, we all came out. We, what he, I don't want to, he did awesome work. Uh, it was his idea. He organized it. He 
raised over ten thousand dollars for the kids. I think you and I both helped in that, but the whole community came yeah. out, supported him on his awesome idea. I want to give a shout out to Varunda, who I think I helped a, helped a lot behind the scenes. Whoever else did that, like a lot of people worked hard on what Shocker did, raising all that money, and, bringing all those viewers not, to the game. Yep, and not to take away, obviously he's the man at the front, and he absolutely well deserved most of the credit. But yeah. um, if you, I do feel like if you're going to throw that out on someone else, you've you've basically set that standard for yourself. And you all of a sudden, if that's how you rise, you have to stick with it. Or at the same time, just don't throw it on anyone else and then mm. stream whatever you want to. When, you, when you're feeling like streaming Planetside, stream Planetside. When you're not, don't. I just don't feel like you should kind of poke someone else in the eye and then flip like that. Okay, so don't act like you're the only authentic guy in the room and then leave the room. Yeah, that's, that, I, I think that sums up my mm. feeling. Uh, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure what I think about that. Yeah. I'm not sure I think about that. I think a lot of people saw the way that you got that remark in at the end of that video as a little bit of a, a surprise and maybe a little bit of a weak move because it was so delayed after everything happened. And it was at the end of a end of a long video. Like, how do you respond to that, man? Uh, I think what people want is for there to be shouting match right at the front. Mm. But I don't think I don't think people have enough context. And so I went out and uh, I made another video. And yeah. I just what I've seen is that people like people had a feeling that somehow TR was doing something different than anyone else on Connery, okay. zerging more, pop dumping more, whatever it is, whatever you don't like about it. Ooh, all the bad and, things we don't like. Yeah, exactly. And okay. what I notice is when people try to interpret it themselves, they then react to that. And so they say, okay, TR is the problem. And then they do that more to TR. So all of a sudden, if they hadn't interpreted anything, everything would be kind of normal. All mm -hmm. sides, playing planet sides, zerging back and forth, pop dumping, all that stuff. But once you think one faction is doing it worse, then there's a pile on to that faction. Mm -hmm. As long as no one really interprets it, it all pretty much evens out. Everyone gets the short end. Everyone gets the long end. So I feel like there's this big sentiment in one direction that was insurmountable. It wasn't based in the numbers. People weren't really watching it. And so I don't think there was any way at the time to just say that and get people to understand it. To me, it just happened to be that Schachter brought the proof. And he, he did it. He went for partner and then he went and did other things. Mm -hmm. Uh, it didn't show itself till later on. Hmm. And that to me was the time to comment on it. I see. I see. Hmm. Cause this pain. So me, yeah, man. if, if like I, I consider if, if, both of y'all to be my good, my good, but like my friends, not just like planet side acquaintances, but friends, hmm. I feel like y'all are, are, are like some of the upstanding people on, uh, that, that stand, uh, that bridge the chasm. Of of the many cultural divides that Planet Side has, and this yeah. this to me that I I feel like the, the chasm widened because of that. I think that kind of sucks. I agree. I think we went backwards as a community with it. But as you know, I, I'm sorry. I'm not the one to get punched like that. Which mm. when I feel like there was not grounds. Uh, not only did he not have context, so to me, there's not a reason to say anything in the first place. I don't think he was a knowledgeable enough person to comment on the Connery Outfit Wars to start out. So if you're going to make that comment, I think you got to know what's going on. Know the context. It is part of my feeling. And then, so from there, re react accordingly that, okay, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's serious scene. I don't know the Connery culture. Uh, I would love it if it was acceptable to just say, hey, here's the numbers, guys. Here's the numbers. You know, TR gets double teamed about the same amount as everyone else. TR pops dump, pop dumps about the same as everyone else. TR zergs about the same as everyone else. TR over pops until someone starts feeling differently. And that's when it starts shifting outside of that. Right now, it's so far away from it. No one cares. It's all very even. Yeah, there's Sometimes the... we're getting hosed on TR. And sometimes we're the ones that are just zerging all over the place. There's the, the narrative creation. And once the narrative yeah. is created, then that... There are all kinds of things that emerge from that. Now, I, I hear you going back to talking about like daily planet side. And I, I, you as someone who 
was you were you were casting those matches, um, the Outfit Wars matches a year ago. I can't believe we're still talking about it. Um, and and you also play Conry. You play next to those guys every day when you're playing Planet Side, blowing off steam like you said, taking a break from your you know 900 other hobbies. Uh, mm -hmm. So I I see that that perspective you have. Um, I think that even though you have that valid perspective and a lot of and and you can can really improve the community competition in the way that you did that there's still people who look you can look at it's kind of like this like you can explain why why you know a, a turkey sandwich was served with expired rotting turkey like you can explain it but mm -hmm. it still stinks and you don't need to be an expert on food processing to know to smell spoiled meat right and it doesn't excuse the fact. And when people are you know, all in the room talking about how love, how you know the sandwich was and how the meal was, and and no one's calling out that this, this is fucking spoiled. How come no one's saying anything? I I have a little sympathy with the person who's brave enough to say something, even if they don't say it perfectly. And I also recoiled when Shockter exploded. So I sympathize. It's like holy shit. I like Archie. Like no one's perfect. This is a little much. But uh, I think it's I think it's still right to call it out, even if you don't have all the context. Don't you think that's fair? I, I think that's great. I, here's what's confusing to me: is Planet Side's very incestuous. Ooh. Um, who who yes, started the Kestrel Courts? Wasn't it? Uh, oh yeah, hang on, Theram and Dim Giant in response to the uh, the activity of this the the space pigs, right? Yeah. So okay. Ke so Shocker is literally playing on a team. That's led by a guy that's running with recursion. Do you, do you see? So why aren't we all mad at recursion? Because they're housing the guy that started the double teaming. Yeah, this is, isn't this what you call whataboutism? Well, that's, my point is, is that I feel like everyone's involved. Everyone's. Right? So it's like, yeah, why okay. is anyone throwing a stone at Pale Tiger? You know, mm. like, I, I think it sucks, but we're all at fault. You know, there, there, I, I don't, I couldn't pick out one person on Connery to not say, oh yeah, you've, you've participated in some Kestrel Accord events. Why are we getting so upset with Pagel Tiger for like doing it? Okay. Like everyone's little sh literally showed up to double team B-Way. So like, okay. to me, it's like, it's kind of, I, so I'm just going to be like, I disagree, but I'm the minority uh -huh, and uh -huh. this is a democracy. And if I think that's the bad way to play this game, who cares? My opinion doesn't matter. Two thirds of our server says it is no problem to go and pound someone into their warp gate. Uh huh. Doesn't matter what I think. That's it. So when I see yeah. it on live, it's like, God, this sucks. How far have we fallen? But it's not my place to knock it because I'm the minority. Interesting. So I'm not going to go right up dark and recursion and every other person that played NC and VS that night. I think it sucks. I have a video out there about it. But to me, it's honestly, everything plays better when no one thinks they knows what's what's going on. When when people start thinking OTR is the problem, that's when everything starts going down. Yeah. Or like, oh, same, all those same guys for are TR. They're all cheaters. Yeah, if TR, exactly. You know? If TR starts thinking, oh, recursion or whatever is the problem, that's when one faction ends up getting double teamed and all of the we're all worse off for mm -hmm. it. All the fights suck more for it. Everything sucks more for it. So as long as no one starts thinking they know better than anyone else, I feel like the whole server just plays better. When we're near a Kestrel Accord event, it sucks for the next month after. Not because those events are still going. It's because some open platoon leader remember how much they dominated TR that one, one night. And they want to keep going. As long as no one's really thinking about it, then they just play the game in front of them. And it just ebbs and flows. And it ends up even and out. And sometimes you get good ones. Sometimes you get bad ones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what I'd say is that it's like, who can I point? To? I got I to gotta either point the finger at everyone or say I'm in the minority and just just the way it's going to be. Alpha uh -huh. Wars is going to be that way. As Geralt of Rivia would say, if I'm to choose between one evil and another, I'd rather not choose at all, right? That That's noble. That That's noble. I heard that. What? Yeah, there's there's no, what, middling, lesser, or greater? Greater evil, it's yeah. It's all just evil, right? Right. Um, yeah, I, I I could never call everyone in Planet Side the problem. <laughs> you know, I'm not... I'm not willing to pick one outfit as the evil guy, whether it's Pale Tiger or Recursion or Dark or Dim Giant or Fuwak or whoever else was there for the special yeah. course. And, and if everyone's acting shitty, what's the common denominator? It's the game right, we're playing. Right, exactly. 
and don't everyone's don't like, hate the well, player, hey, hate the game. You're on Pale Tiger. You're on TR. Pale Tiger was the first person that ever suggested it. He came on command chat. He's like, hey, guys, we got to form an alliance. Don't do this. So, like, I understand where VS and TR come from because it was absolutely seated in TR how crazy it backfired on him. But everyone rallied to do it against his faction. Okay. Okay. I think I see. I think I see. Um, and I'm sympathetic. So let let me see if, if if I got it so far. Um, it's like the this uh there's this Reddit. It's called uh, Am I the asshole? I think A A I T A. Are you familiar with it? I am. That's great. Yeah. So, uh, what happens? People who don't know is someone posts a, a scenario that happened, like maybe a, a description of the Outfit Wars match. That would be a good post. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, everyone who 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 responds votes. You're the asshole. YTA, not the asshole. In other words, the other guys at fault, which is what the, the poster is hoping for, of course. Yep. Or ESH, everyone sucks here. I think that's the yeah. acronym they use. Okay. And what you're saying is ESH is where we are. Um, well, I'll happily claim to be the asshole. Um, you don't call someone a hypocrite, hypocrite without being the asshole. So mm -hmm. I, I don't mind taking that one. Okay. But I will also say is it's just... Uh, I just know a lot of people, there are people playing in multiple matches on both Emerald and Connery. Um, and so, as, as I said, like these outfits are so merged. Literally, you know, uh, Shockter's playing on in and out in a service smash that's led by a guy that's playing by recursion that's got the guy that did the thing. Yeah. So it's like, I know everyone's going to be like, well, well, they're all just individuals. Well, it's it's plant. Everything's mixed together. And I, I just don't see one person to put. It's not just Pale Tiger. It's not just Picard. It's, it's not a culture just issue. Giant. It's not just there. It's like there's not one person every, you know. So, yeah. yeah so I, I don't I don't see bravery from Shockter. I see him playing to a crowd that hates Pale Tiger. I'm sorry. Like, I don't see him calling any, anything out. This wasn't surprising. Uh, this has happened multiple times on Connery. I don't see like a big stand up, standing up for justice. Like no one stood up for justice when TR got mauled into the warp gate. They made, made memes and celebrated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like, why, why is this outfit worse? Different and isn't that supposed me? to happen in planet side? That's a three faction conflict. Like, well, I that get that, but part of the I formula? disagree with pre-planning it. But you're right. Double teaming does happen. But to me, it crosses the line once you pre-plan the event. Right. Whether that's in Outfit Wars or on live. To me, it's a bigger problem on live. Outfit Wars was an alpha. You know, that was Picard's and Pale Tiger's thing. And I, I realized that what for the community, mean, it's though? not. What is alpha? The, mean, for though? the community, it's not. Yeah, right. Yeah, They're, yeah, you're yeah. all in. They've wanted this forever. Rel's trying to like tamp down It was not an alpha right level on. of effort from the community. Let's put it that way. A absolutely. I, I totally get it. But you also have to understand like that, that's a Picard's approaching it that way. They're they're saying, hey, it's an out because it is just an alpha. Hey, it's a shit show because outfits aren't showing up and people are basically shoo-ins till the end. So it's like, I realize that's kind of an excuse from them. At the same time, it's sort of like, okay, it is an alpha. They're they're finding the weaknesses in the system. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And okay. I realize they're using it as a cop-out, but the cop-out was kind of served up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So to reel this all the way back, mm -hmm. if Blood is on everyone's hands. Mm -hmm. Then what right does anyone have to put on a pair of clean-looking gloves and say, I know the truth, and that person is one who's wrong? And that's what you see in Shockter. Or saw um, when you made that comment. To me, I don't, I don't think there was really... I think, okay, he, he can say that. He can say that. But to me, it was like, okay, it sucks, whatever, but... If you're going to throw shade at Archie or I, then you've just created a standard that, hey, if you're streaming here and the community's bringing you up, you're locking yourself in. Mm. Don't throw that out there. Then do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. yeah. That was, well, was kind of I'm sympathetic all the way back to the front. With, yeah, here, yeah. I'm sympathetic with that point of view. Um, number one, it's a small community. It's a small community. Like, we all have to deal yeah. with each other to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, not, we're not a civilization. We're a tribe. And we could yep. all die because this is a tiny, tiny scene. And it's a small game with a small scene. And who knows what will happen? We have a history of, like, the development staff disappearing without anyone knowing about it, which things <laughs> yeah. seem good now. 
but yeah. holy shit, that sucked. Um, yeah. So I, I guess, like, yes. Um, just to cinch a couple things together, I think that Arshi did nothing wrong. Yeah. I, I think that there is a conversation around Arshi among parts of the community that centers on uh, a perception of inauthenticity from Arshi because he's not interested in being good at playing the game. And then mm -hmm. he's and then he moved on to something else. And if yeah. you watch his New World content, it looks a lot like the Planet Side content he used to make. Some of it, yeah. It's it's just Arshi being Arshi. It's what he does. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't I can't hate him for that. I don't hate him for that. And there's nothing wrong yeah. with moving on. Um, can I? Sorry to interrupt. You. Can yeah, I yeah. interject a little bit on Arshi? Oh yeah. I think Planet Side Two is really hard because if you're not good enough, you're going to get heavily shit on. Believe me, I and, fucking know it. <laughs> I suck and, at the game. <laughs> Sorry, go on. And and so it's really hard as a streamer. I'm not I'm not a great Planet Side Two player, but I'm good enough that I can shut up some people. You know. Uh -huh. And so I can hack it well enough streaming that okay, I can hang with the top. Archie Archie is good, but it would always be tough for him to be at that level. He was never. I don't think he wants to dial himself in that much. Yeah, kind of. Be that I relate much of a shooter, to that. So. I relate yeah. to that. So you know, Planet Side Two is tough. So you're going to get shade no matter what. I get shade from people that are way worse than me. Like you know, you're going to have to just, you're just going to have to get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, I know I don't have to be the best Planet Side Two player to be able to talk, and still be confident in what I'm saying about it. Yeah. Um. So I can get over that hump. But I just want to point out, like it's there's, I think for Arshi, it's a really tough decision to pick this as your one and only when you're going to know you're going to face that blowback. So if you have the opportunity of something like New World, where it's new hotness and you want to try to go in... Yeah, and the skill ceiling the is not, not so high. Yeah, and it's exactly. new. And People aren't exactly. been playing it for 10 years. Exactly, yes. <laughs> so I just I just want to point that out. He never promised... I think he loved every moment with Planet Side 2 in the community, and he is just an awesome big event caster. Um, while Shocter's awesome at it, I would still... I would put Arshi as maybe my number one for like... Just the hype effect of like the cobalt battles and all that. I, you know, I don't know. He's just really good. Yeah, at he it. he brought he brought a unique energy that I don't see anyone. I haven't seen anyone else do to the I, game. I and totally he was an, and he so, was an asset while he was here. And yep. and if if Archie ever said or anything about the game that was dumb, and I believe he did. We all do sometimes. Mm -hmm. I know I certainly mm -hmm. do. I believe it was not not because. I believe it was out of just how difficult it is to be good at and understand a game like this. Yeah. Not because he hadn't put in the effort. Because look at what the man yep. did. He clearly put in a lot of effort. And do you have to play Planet Side for 2,000 hours before you can turn your stream on? That seems like a ridiculous yeah. thing to think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't think he ever, he never, to me, he didn't present himself as the authority. You know, I sometimes present myself as authority, mostly in the, effort to teach new players but i do think i have the advantage of being super dialed in to a way a lot of people are not so i can i can take a pass on that a little more than maybe a streamer like arshi could yeah like that's like one of the lanes right when it comes to making content is be the guy who's there for the new players you've always positioned mm -hmm. yourself that way yeah. and uh, kamikaze yep. also does a little bit of that too not not exactly mm -hmm. the same as you but but same kind of idea yep yep so, yeah. uh, yeah, I just, I don't think, yeah, I think Arshi did a good job while I was here. I don't think people should, uh, take it personally or feel like he abandoned anyone. If anyone. Okay. Does. Okay. I'm going to give you my, my, based on what we think I've heard, I'm going to give you my counter argument. Okay. Mm -hmm. For what mm -hmm. you said about Shocker at the end of your video, when you called him uh -huh. out. Yep. Which is this. And you can tell me if you think it, if it holds any water, because it might not. Sure. Um, if. The Connery folks, the incestuous, everyone's got a little blood on their hands kind of situation is true to the point where you can't look at a pale tiger and say, you're the problem. You're the prime mover. You're the patient zero. If we pull you out, everything will be fine. You know, the Donald Trump of America. Just get rid of him and we'll go back to the golden age. Mm -hmm. Serious into the void. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> All good. You wiggle the mouse. 
Um, I'm so enthralled. I'm not even touching. I'm not even fiddling with my screen. I'm so enthralled with your. That's podcast. what we do, man. Okay. <laughs> um. So if that's true, if it's a situation where it's a don't hate the player, hate the game, can't we also see the conversation or around the game with Shockter, with Harshi, with you, uh, with little old me there in the corner? Can't we also see that the same way? And isn't it equally unfair to call out Shockter for being a little vocal and maybe a little wrong about some of the things he said? When we've all been a little vocal and a little wrong about things we've said, when can't we appeal to our better angels and see this is something that I think I saw. Let me, oh my God, I wish I could find this. But to appeal to the truth inside each of us that's trying to get out, however imperfectly, because I think we all make sense inside of our own heads. But it's a terrific skill to be able to manifest what's in here out there. It's a lifetime of work. And even people who put in a lifetime of work on it, working hard, don't get don't get it perfectly. I certainly don't. Isn't that a fair is in is that not fair? Like what do you think of that? I, and that's what a better me would do. So maybe this the ghost run for this year. You know, I get a little better next year. And when I get called out for what I think unfairly, I don't lash back out. Right. Okay. So I agree with you that that is the, that is the better person I aspire to be. Um, but it also not only is a raw spot, but then on top of it, the second raw spot mm. of get, getting hit right with, uh, hang on, hang on before we, we move on to to more, yeah. more evidence, yeah. let's say. Would it? Would you be okay with apologizing to Shockter for calling him out? Would you say right here, Shockter? I want to build the bridge back. I'm sorry about what I said, even though I felt strongly about it at the time. Uh, yes, yes, I will. So, I was, Shockter, I apologize for calling you a hypocrite. My frustration was that uh, it feels like you took a tact where you'd throw stuff at Rel or at me, and then immediately want to reconcile. And I don't think that lets you off the hook for things you put out there. That was my feeling. But I apologize about how I handled it. It was kind of a cheap shot. Okay. <sighs> and then I do want to... Sorry. I, I, I want all my, all my friends to get along. This is <laughs> making me very happy. I, Please continue. I do want to bring one thing up. While, okay. pale, t <clears throat> while pale Tiger on Connery while Pagan Tiger was the first one to suggest it, he never achieved double teaming. He never created an alliance in the way that the other two factions did. So I'm all the more frustrated. Pale Tiger has done some terrible things. And so mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with him because I tried to defend him and then he's threatening the life. He's he's saying a dev should die. Like so it's like, Pale, I can't help you anymore, man. You know, yeah. you, you just crossed the line. You're not apologizing. He, he's he kind of he deserves the hate he's gonna get now because that's that's a place you don't touch. You know, even if even if you do have a moment, you come out and you say sorry. Not only was he wrong about what the dev did, but then he's So anyways. Yeah, that's I a, that's can, a line. Can't... It's a line. We have to point it at is. that and say no. Exactly. So I can't I can't do that anymore. But but uh at the time it was he never achieved it and the uh, the other two factions came on down hard on TR for that, uh, especially B-Way. And so it was like why is he getting so much hate when the other factions are the one that actually did it? You know, I see what you're so, saying. That that was weird to me. No, oh, that's a, that's a good question, and maybe maybe it is uh, um, that quality that you first mentioned: the willingness to go there first, the willingness to uh, to say that and either, may, the, to cross the line. And there's and maybe, something maybe about that's that. It. Maybe he's guilty because he was the. I mean, he did try. It wasn't just like, hey, let's talk about. It. He he tried, so he made the effort. Yeah. You know. Okay. It's like he just he just lost the weapon on the way or so you know so there was definitely intent and planning okay yeah yeah anything else you want to say about that man i'm i'm really well, sorry you started guess, this out this way no 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 I, I i'm sure a lot of people want to talk to it the second part is you know not only is there that which i i thought was unfair because obviously I, I put a lot of time and energy into outfit wars mm. um mm -hmm. um and i put a lot of time and energy into connery yeah. Um, and then I, on top of that, I put a lot of time and energy in trying to get late, late shift through as a yeah. 
what I would say is the only good. Um, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. Just reviewing. You the only deserve good, it, dude. You hit it. The, the only good streamer event that went off basically without a hitch, other than an internal and community implosion. The event for the streamers, they were oblivious to any of it. Yeah. Right. As far as bringing the, in big streamers from outside the scene and showing them mm -hmm. a good time, this yep. worked. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And so, and I agree. again, mass, just like there's always tons of people behind the scenes. Matt Rell helped so much. Sokar's Legion helped so much. Um, B Way helped. Like all these people came together to. You know, Sokars was like, we're going to give you a fight. Let's pick the off continent so you don't uh -huh. have to interrupt all the players yeah, um, yeah. with your big, you know, annoying Zerg. And we're going to give you fights, you know, or uh, or people that were, you know, rel trying to avoid some of the inevitable sniping that um, they're going to get there. Yeah, stream sniping so, is sort of inevitability. You fight it, but yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's not something you just, you don't ban hammer. You just kind of like, okay, well, we'll replace yes, that tank. Stop that. Understandable, but stop. Yeah, because those guys dove them, you know, dove them with an orbital strike or whatever. So, you know, you kind of yeah. just up there. So, so after all that, which was a crap ton of work, yeah. um, that was uh, pretty frustrating about the community's reaction that they're then going to stand behind stream snipers, um, <sighs> you know, and expect me to just deal with it. Like to watch the the first chance we've had at a good event implode is not not a reasonable trade to me. You know, that must have really sucked with for the, you. In the aftermath. You can't solve it with a three-day ban later on, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, look, you put in a huge amount of effort. You were put into a difficult position by the people mm -hmm. who were about to completely sabotage the culmination of this fun harasser race that was being coordinated. Mm -hmm. And you jumped in to stop a bunch of people who were setting mines underwater on mm -hmm. a, a, like a, a land bridge on, on, on the continent where n any newbie without the... the um, explosion HUD uh, implant has no chance mm -hmm. of anticipating yeah. and dealing with that. It's just going to be the entire Zerg dying. Yep. And yep. we had people it, it from the community it, who were, who were drop potting in with beacons and placing and mines. It's, it's the guy that was hitting Lyric too. You know, I've, what, what was his name? I forget his name there. Oh, it's like a long you know? multi-word. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So let's you not, know, he let's did not it give him any glory. I know you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's like, We've seen this before, you know, it's like, anyways. Yeah, and I I, I, I think you're totally right. To and I, I, I remember, like, when this happened, thinking, not only did, did Sirius have to take the L in dealing with this and putting in the huge amount of effort for any man to get this set up, um, and then you had to deal with that stream sniper situation, and then the community, like, kind of gleefully poked at you. And, yeah. uh... Tried to get you in trouble for breaking the rules. Yeah. And, um, and I want to give a shout out that to, to all the supporters. I mean, you know, the supporters ratioed it, ratioed it, right? So that that's very kind. I want to shout out to everyone that stepped up for me too. But it's still annoying that you have to deal with the other half of it. Yeah. As well. And there was that, that element of people who just... Uh, they just want to stir it, right? They just boy, I don't even know what to say about about people who do that. I don't even know what to say about it. Um, yeah. There's there's fun in games, and then there's fun in games. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, sorry, maybe I'll say this. There's, there's fun in games, and there's engaging in bad faith. Mm -hmm. And I, I understand people who are just kind of trolls and just kind of like in it for the yucks, but if, if, if a person is playing the game every single day, has thousands of hours, lots of friends, and outfit, and they're still putting in all this time to just fuck with people, that's not being a troll. That's that's yeah. kind of acting in bad faith. Yeah. Yeah. So th that was it. So obviously I was I was pretty raw, so I will I will take that blame there for sure in sure. both of those events. Um but, so you were feeling a little, a little drained and a little let down by the scene in yeah. general, yeah, and was, and maybe you were in that place that. when you were making that video and you just kind of squeeze that little shot at shock during. Oh, the game. that it was it was absolutely it was me. It was setting the record straight, right? I wanted to clear up anything that's come at me. What I felt was unfairly, unjustly, unfoundly, 
Yeah. It was, it was supposed to be a full, just do it all. Cause it, and sorry, I know people don't like that. It was that, a good discussion. Me, and actually I, I, I hate to just poke at the last thing that happened in that video. Cause it's 50 yeah. minutes long and you did a good patient discussion of the entire issue. I did my own breakdown, which I, I'm sure I spent like five hours on it. I don't know. I go forever <laughs> on shit. Um, breaking yeah. it down too. Um, like it's, it's, it's not to under, underappreciate the complexity of the situation and the fact that there, mm -hmm. there are some, some unfortunate compromises that had to get made. And mm -hmm. it's not like, it's not a good versus evil thing. It's a people mm -hmm. versus people thing. And there's good and evil in all people. That's a good way to say it. Okay. Should we talk about Osher now? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. In. Well, listen, it, man. It, I, I, I just want to just put a button, put a, put a bow on that. If that's okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, totally fine. We only have a short amount of time. So just so, so folks know while I'm kind of, why, why I kind of started off with that. Usually I like to romance a little bit and build up to the, to the, the good stuff. Um, and I just, I think that that's a divide that doesn't need to be here. So thanks for going there and, and be willing, yeah, be no willing problem. to be and I'll say one thing for me is I, and I'm sure most people have this, it, it doesn't die in my head unless I put it out there on paper or in my clay space on video. So mm -hmm. it, it's a little bit of a selfish video in that sense. Oh, I know what you it mean. Of, it gets it out of my head. And, yes. uh, you know, so, some people want to hear about it. Some people are like, serious, that, that doesn't belong out there in yeah. the public sphere. And I intend, I, I get that. And I respect that opinion. And they're right. Um, you know, part of it. But part of it is I need to just say my side of it. You needed to get um, the demons out. Yeah. And that's the know, way I think about it. I, I, under, I understand that I will lose support for that. And that's. Appreciate. I respect. You were just we'll doing the best you could. We'll agree to disagree on that topic. You know, I'm going to share my side and you can have your side and we'll agree to disagree. It doesn't, I'm not going to hold it against you if you say, I disagree, I'm on Shakhtar's side. Totally fine. I, let's go play Planet Side together. You know, I don't, I don't hold that against you at all. Yeah, no, I'm not on anyone's side. Me yeah. personally. I yeah. think, I think most of these things are just communication issues. Yeah. And with a little bit of patience and you know, someone like me to, to force us to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, sure. I think, uh, I, I think, uh, can I dive right in? Please. I, I think one problem we have with Osher, I, I love Osher. Um, Me too. Go one on. problem we, we, we have with Osher and Planet Side in general is a lot of the hype around Planet Side is actually, it, it, everyone was waiting, has been waiting for it to be proved right in Planet Side to implode. And okay. that opportunity was really when escalation was going to come. Like that mm. was the Planet Side arena is falling. Is this patch going to suck? And, for, for yes, to export for it to crash and burn to go to zero like everyone predicted seven years ago. So oh. so what it I, I'm 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 taking a massive. I'm listening. Leap, so I'm listening. Get, go on. I'll get to I'll get to where I'm going. I'm on so the right. What it is is the tough thing now is Planet Side Two proved everyone wrong. Daybreak Games, Rogue Planet Games, whatever you want, and that's really disappointing. So like when mm. Escalation comes around, it generates a lot of like just hype in general, and part of it is people showing up just with popcorn wanting to watch something go all wrong. And now there's not really as much risk about it. Everyone knows that, okay, plants that do, they made it, they're here to stay. So it's like, we miss a little bit of that like negative news that gets people here to like watch the popcorn. And so I think that's one of the troubles is, we'll have to navigate now. That is so is cynical, that... man. Do you really think that? <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I just, or you just I think people are going to be, well, I, I think people are going to point out some of the numbers are not as high as like escalation. Oh yeah, uh, pe pe people love to do that. You go to the Steam charts and you say, "Oh look, this this update did nothing because we saw the same amount of people we had a year ago." At two months later, well, I'm just likely. Yeah, uh, I am that cynical because I think that some of the negative press helps draw people in just as much as good press, and I, I don't think there's enough negative. I don't think there's a Planet Side Arena blowing up right before this to get people to look at Planet Side again. I don't know. I I. I I think it's true that, you know, what's the saying? Um, any news is good news, right? Mm -hmm. um, I know, like, one of the things that always gets me interested in Planet Side again is when there's community drama. I don't know why. I, mm -hmm. I'm just a, just a gadfly in that sense. But it gets me interested in playing alone. the game again. 
It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't get me interested in talking shit to people. It doesn't get me interested in dumping on Planet Side. Like maybe if that's something that I'm going to do anyway, I'll do it. But it gets me interested in engaging with the game the way I want to. You know, I want to. I want to get some more ASP points on my my main character so I can do some more wacky builds. I want to uh, finally alert. Finally, uh, you know, get, get my IVI over a thousand on one of my characters. I want to. Uh, you know, plug in and do some ops with with one of these one, one of these outfits. I know we're full of cool people, but I never made the time to do it before. Uh, this yeah. is what I get motivated to do. Or, and of course, check out the new content. Um, it goes without saying. Yeah. I don't know if there are that many people who, on mass, are engaging in bad faith. I really think that it's a small amount of people who create most of the garbage. I saw this great infographic about Reddit actually, where. It was talking about how a very small number of people from a very small number of communities are responsible for almost all of the most controversial, worst, most garbage stuff on the website. I think that's true everywhere you go. Yeah, that, that doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. But I do think just, just like you, like the drama gets you interested. Yeah. I think, I think, it, I think it makes the game feel alive. In the way, just general run of the mill success doesn't. If you know what I mean, it's like like with Outfit Wars. Mm. Like while it seems crazy and dramatic, it just it makes it feel alive, right? When you get a lot of voices, people get more amped up. I feel like if there's more negativity, there's more positivity that rises out of the woodworks to counter it. Mm. So, I just feel like that amp up. I don't know if it helps, but it. I, I definitely. I see what you're it, saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It I overall think... drives people. To show up and see what's going on, and then okay, they see what's going on. Oh, I do kind of like this game again, you know that sort of thing. Yeah, well, it's certainly harder to point to a slow ground swell that increases over time. When you see mm -hmm. something that slowly gets more popular, like Deep Rock Galactic is a game that I have loved, and the first time I yeah. played it, it was a lot less popular than it is today. But it's just been slowly chugging stuff out, doing good things, staying true to what their core what their core proposition is, and mm -hmm. they're more popular than ever. Yeah. But it's hard to point to any one thing in the game and say, oh, yeah, that did it. That was the trick. But when it comes yep. to negative things, it's a lot easier to point to, oh, yeah, there was that scandal. Oh, yeah, yep. there was Outfit Wars. So yep. it becomes more a part of the narrative, and here we are talking about it. Yeah. yeah. It's like um, the, the theories of history, right? The great man theory of history versus the trends and forces, ways of looking at history. Is history actually made by great men, or is it made by the the the... the billions and trillions of actions of everyday people that that slowly move in a certain direction inexorably and uh, right. probably it's a little bit of both um yeah but uh i see what you're saying so translating that to osher mm -hmm. i guess that sounds like you're seeing a lot of uh 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 cynical popcorn chewing happening with osher um well, I don't see a lot of that. Is my th I, what do you see? I feel like I, I see, I see people are curious. Um, I personally enjoy it. Um, my fear, all I don't see how new content necessarily changes it changes anything. You know what I mean? Like, I can have fun in some rocks on Indar, but I'm usually stuck. You know, either at Quartz Ridge Camp or, you know. The crown. I'm usually stuck at a few fights that I don't really love, right? Mm. So I feel like I Been can have fun that. on any continent. And if you make a new continent, great. But I do feel like that new continent is going to just fall right back into the shuffle really quick. And you know me, I really feel like I, I talk about the battle flow. But the changes that would create that groundswell, I think, are different. Okay. That makes sense. So it sounds yeah. like what you're saying is... um. After the initial wave of interest and novelty dies off, it's just going to be another continent, and it's yes. not going to it's not going to put a dent in the long term success of the game. Yes, that's what I think. I th I think it's the right decision. I've seen people calling, "We want another continent. We want another continent for seven years or whatever." Oh. Right since since Hawson, and I don't want to snuff that out. I think it's cool, but I do think it it'll just fall back into business as usual and mm -hmm. people will still they'll be turned off by some of the other just difficult parts of the game yeah can i share a, an anecdote 
with about but Osher that yeah I I heard from um somebody an elite infantry player who plays with one of those elite infantry outfits. You probably mm-hmm. have heard of him. I'm not going to name drop him because he doesn't know I'm telling him the story. Okay. Um, and maybe he's ashamed of that. I don't know. But <laughs> I was I was talking with a bunch of guys about the continent, and he said that he loves Osher. And that when he plays Osher, he doesn't feel like a cynical infantry person anymore. He's doing all kinds of random stuff. The kind of stuff yeah. that elite infantry players accuse shitters of. Are you familiar with this term? Yes, yes, yes. You know, hopping in a hopping in an AV max and running between multiple lattice links. Yeah. Hopping in, in oh, a God. gunner of some random dude's Sunderer who then drives off a cliff because he's never driven the thing before. He must feel so dirty. <laughs> but he he's he's like he is loving it. He was loving it. He feels like he's gotten back in touch with some essence of planet side that he had lost touch with by being focused on the infantry game, by being focused on headshots, yep. Yep. capturing points, point holds, all the stuff, all the 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 really leaned in players try to do. Um, mm-hmm. Leaned in high skill players try to do. And I am bringing this up because that is what I felt. And it could go away. I could just be a stupid noob here. But I bought construction for the first time after playing this continent. I'm okay. still not sure if I like construction, but I now yep. own all the shit. And I tried building nice. a few bases. I, for the very first time, I got my first, my first ESF uh, anti-air kill. Where I dog, okay. I, I, I went and go dog fight with someone. I, I was on rapid, actually. Actually, I nice. I, I, okay. I plus one him actually, so I didn't really get, okay. you know, okay. get him fair. But what he's the first guy I ever killed air to air. First okay, time, nice. What's what, what's remarkable about that isn't that like I finally came through, but I finally tried because mm-hmm. I'm the kind of guy who will I play the way I want to play, which is mainly light assault. Like I love jetpacks, mm-hmm. and I redeploy yep. around, and I grumble if there aren't good fights. It's the way I usually yep. play the game. Yep. Um, the way a lot of infantry, especially solo infantry players, play it. And um, there's this weird behavior that I, that I find myself, I would find myself doing where I would be, uh, my faction will have won a fight. Like the fight's basically over. We push the enemy back to their Sunderer. But what do we do? Ah, oh, we've pushed them back to the Sunderer. Now we can finally just farm. And we just sit there with our automatic weapons, wait for them to spawn, just increase our kill-death ratio. Yeah. And no one takes out their rocket launchers, their mines. <laughs> and in fact, if someone does, they will oftentimes get yelled at for doing sure. so. So there's this Killing weird... The fight. Yeah, and this is one of the many chasms in the planet side community, right? There's yep. the, the players who are... Oh boy, this is so hard to capture. And um, um, but I think Osher captures something. It it moves the needle on recapturing some fundamental essence of Planet Side that I've had a very hard time finding. And this is speaking yep. as an old Planet Side one head. Um, mm-hmm. Planet Side one is a game that had like ten to fifteen bases per continent, not thirty to forty like Planet Side two. The, yep. the play space was smaller. But everything was much further apart. You were a lot more likely to to have vehicle fights spilled out across lanes and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. The amount of fighting that happens outside of the base proper, um, it gets something for vehicles to do, it gets something for construction to do. I'm not sure it's good yet, but it has me perked up in a way that no other planet side update has perked me up. Yeah, see, I uh, I'm, I'm working on this video. I... I... I was trying to get it out before the launch, but just how I would modify construction. I see construction as having massive potential. And again, infantry mains will shudder at the thought. How dare you? uh, How dare you? To me, what's tough about construction right now is while for builders, that guys that think of themselves as building a fortress and alimoing in it, Uh that type of gameplay is not at all fun for an infantry player. Yeah. But I feel like like there's a way to bring it. It's kind of on the extreme. Yeah, exactly. I, but I feel like there's a way where builders can build up bases that can be inf- interesting for infantry players to go fight in and have a new base. 
I, that's the one to me that's what construction could bring is killing repetitiveness like if you put me on and obviously it's it's a critique of myself the fact that i have all this information in my brain esmer indar amr shahas and you put me in any base uh -huh. i will know it inside and out i yep. will know every turn every corner right you, you just develop yep. that and to me what construction brings is an opportunity to create a space that i don't know mm. that every infantry player out there doesn't know and i think that could be fun for infantry players. I think infantry players could appreciate builders if they were given the right tools. I think a builder mm -hmm. should be able to put down a triple stack and then say it gives you, you know, it gives you a discount on some technology. It gives you five more nanites per tick or something for your faction. I think there's ways to allow builders to have these structures that could build up a base that is an infantry, interesting place base for infantry. Right now, pain fields, uh, AI modules, I think it all gets kind of ruined with how it's designed right now. But I yeah. think there's a way to design construction so it supplements the game and creates new interesting places to play and makes the game fresh. So Gotcha. So construction is something that there's a lot of room for on Osher. A lot of room. More room than mm -hmm. any other continent proportionally, right? Yep. And the critique is it's not a place for infantry to play. And you called out mm -hmm. the main culprits, like the pain spire. Like just you mm -hmm. die just from being in one ambiently. No one has to even shoot you. Um, that's not fun. Exactly. Yep. Um, You're trying yeah, to run around and yeah. I got it. I got it. I got it. I haven't thought about that to be honest. I the way I'm seeing construction right now, um, and you know I'm not as experienced as you or a lot of people, but it seems like it's not. Um, you know, I saw a suggestion from someone else on the re on the Reddit today. I think it was today. A, a silly seeming suggestion, but it went after the same thing that you're talking about, which is the idea of um, procedurally generating continents. Um, for, I saw that one too. Yeah. 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 And it's like, okay, yeah, silly suggestion, but yeah, like maybe mm -hmm. there the, there is an appetite for just more different play spaces. And mm -hmm. I mean, we're still getting, we're owed a roadmap by RPG. That's supposed to be the okay, next thing to sure. happen after Osher yep. and Osher's now out. Yep. If we got like a new continent, like once a year, once every 18 months, speed up the pace of iteration. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. there's room for more kinds of play spaces, but also to your point about construction, creating good infantry fights. Yeah, sounds good. Why not give something to everyone? I love the idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love it. To me, I always think of, I always come from a place of they are constrained on resources. Um, you know, I think a lot of people say, hey, it's Daybreak Games and what, EG7, publicly traded company, millions of dollars of revenue any, every year, right? I, I understand that viewpoint as well. Maybe we're not getting as much value. The dev team isn't as la allowed as much resources as they, as they should based on plant side revenue, however you want to unravel that piece of it but i kind of always just think of ways to how can we keep making what we're doing every day fresh and keep people coming back to me people start leaving when it feels repetition of the things they don't like start coming up too much yeah yeah um, and if you can kind of get around that or counteract that then i think you're going to see mm -hmm. more people stick around longer yeah i i just saw kai in the chat bring up something i was thinking about too which is um the problem with player built infantry bases, that idea is you don't build a base to be fun for both sides. You build a base to be a fortress, to be defensible, to give yourself yep. every advantage, right? So, why would, even if players did have assets to, you know, the, the triple stacks that we love, maybe even plunk down a tower? Like, who knows yep. what, 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 what yep. you could have? Um, would players even bother trying to make something fun or would it always just be, um, you know, I'm putting in all this effort. I'm not going to bother if it's not going to get me a W. Yep. And that's always going to be a struggle and that's going to be an issue for Osher in general, right? When the initial excitement wears off, when the people mm -hmm. that aren't willing to throw up a base on those points, what happens to that Southern lane that basically has high road station and the rest of its construction points, Yeah, that's right? a big question mark. The, me, lane's, so. the lane's going to get abandoned like that Northern Esmere lane. Yeah. If you don't have people willing to go put in the effort. Yeah. So that's why I'm, you know, and a increase of your factions nanite game by 10 nanites, that's not good enough. 
<laughs> but there would obviously have to be some sort of carrot there to make it worth doing that. And then I do think, hey, if players could plunk down a tower, a triple stack, or a powerhouse, yeah. start getting designer bases. Mm -hmm. Start getting, hey, this is gonna be this is gonna be Lane Smash's next fight, or this is gonna be, you know, the ten v ten tournaments match. We're gonna mm. design the base that they're gonna fight on. And I think there could be an interest. I think you could even you could get some infantry players more interested in it if the goal was to create fun spaces rather than to create a you can't come in. I, I have a low IVI, so I'm just going to kill you with AI turrets, pain spires, and one-way shields. Like, you know, I think yeah. maybe you could motivate other people to get involved then. It's interesting the way you frame that is I have low IVI, therefore I'm going to. Don't you think that the low IVI emits from something else, that there's something more close to the ground truth about players who don't care about being infantry gods, who play with their shadows turned on and ultra graphics? You know, the, isn't there some other truth those players are trying to get in touch with? I, I totally agree, and I I don't think that's any of their players' motivation. I'm I'm I guess I I'm know you to were you were just yeah. You, I, I, I get I'm what trying you're trying to doing. manifest. I'm, I'm trying to picking manifest at you. the yeah. No, I, I but I totally agree, and I I think there's that chasm right in the player base. Whereas the people that are doing it for fun, that it's has nothing to do with skill. It's like they're interested in that kind of immersive gameplay of being on a big battlefield and flowing yeah. across it and building up structures and like just doing these crazy interesting things and i'm framing it in the eyes of the sweaty player that sees oh this is the only reason someone would waste their time with because that, right? that's where you it see the critique coming from right it couldn't that's possibly you... be fun right yeah Th those players yeah. couldn't be having fun right so that's that's how i'm kind of phrasing it but i think i know people that are that are construction mains truly enjoy it and it is fun mm -hmm. and uh i think it could be fun for more players and be a real integral part of the game with some tweaking okay well, I'm excited. Uh, seeing Osher makes me excited about the future. Um, yeah, and do, it, it so may be. Think is... I stopped sitting on, on on my mountain of 50k certs for the first time in like a year. I just nice. haven't felt like I needed to spend them on anything. Like, why bother? Yeah, I finally yeah. found a reason, and I dropped a bunch of, of cash go. on construction stuff. Like, nice man, nice. Anyway, so you were going to pose a question. I, I I wanted to get your opinion on. Like, it is interesting to me. Is is there going to be a lasting... Is it the start of the groundswell? Is there a lasting effect of Osher? Are we going to build on it? Or is it going to be like, okay, we did something for the construction people. Now we got to go back to, like, Outfit Wars. Like what, what is your thought? I think that when people decide what kind of gaming experience they're up for, they're pretty smart. And I think Planetside makes what the experience is pretty clear pretty early. Um, no matter what the quality of the NPE was and... The, the new tutorial we have, um, you know, nerfing Nano Weave, whatever it is. Uh, and I think what it comes down to, Planet Side is just a niche game. It's it's not a game that has enough people that are hungry for it. Now, I might be wrong about that. I could be wrong. I revisited a, a conversation that Rel had, I think, with Shockter recently. Where he said that Planetside gets a thousand new people every single day to play it. And on average, and they're almost all gone within one week or max two. Yeah. And the churn rate Doesn't is me. massive. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Like I'm not an expert on consumer behavior and marketing. Um I did a video uh last year. Where I talked about like my my wish for Planet Side Two, what I want for new players to have in Planet Side Two, and my my basic proposal was that the sandbox for Planet Side is too big, like <laughs> it's too big and, and which, which makes it too brutal, mm -hmm. and and maybe a way forward would be to find a way to channel that sandbox into something more focused, um, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about six v six infantry, although that could be a manifestation of that idea. But like, um, you know, uh, a, a small scale continent, like like a like a desolation or a or a, or coal tier or something that size, but um, or maybe somewhere between that and the, the the main continent size we have now, it has a smaller number of players. Maybe it's only one one t one faction versus one faction. It's not three factions. Maybe mm -hmm. you have some rules where certain kinds of equipment can't be used. This does the thing in Planet Side One when Osher blew up in the uh 
the Shattering? What was the name of the event on Planetside 1? I can't remember. But it, it turned into the Battle Isles. And they became these four interconnected mini-continents that had their own special rule set. You couldn't use okay. Heavy Assault, which was the okay. main infantry weapon everyone used. It would be like turning off LMGs, um, right. um, basically. Uh, and uh, you also couldn't pull heavy vehicles. You couldn't pull main battle tanks, and you couldn't pull... Um, uh, like like liberators stuff like that, so it was like let's tweak the formula a little bit, and I keep and I, I had this sense last year I was overcome by that the the planet side sandbox one of the main tactics our lovely developers are taking right now with expanding the game is to literally add more toys to the sandbox. We now have Bastion, we now have Colossi, we now have. Um, uh, load stars. We now have deliverers. We now have all all the, and the amount of of toys just keeps getting larger and larger. And when you're a new player, and you and you don't understand how you died, you don't understand how to get better. And if you don't understand how to get better, you're fucked. Yeah. So I thought to myself, shrink it down. Yeah. But give I give them a wrong. smaller space to begin in. I I get it. I get like, it. still have a reflection of big planet side, but mm -hmm. give it to people. Allow people to engage with it, and like, like, and it could be fun. Like, you could have, um, like, imagine Osher, but without any land, just the flotillas in the corner, and mm -hmm. it was all a big air ball or something like that. Maybe the the flotillas and the tridents. I don't know. I'm just okay. making it up as I go. I get you. Yeah, and it's an and and all you can pull. Are uh, like air vehicles. I don't know, like something. I'm not a designer, but yeah, no, the access access to the proposition of planet side seems hard. You see what's in the trailers. You see what's in the screenshots. How do I get that experience? Yeah, and it's not it's not easy to find. No, you 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 nailed it. It's same like me. I would I would never be able to go back to World of Warcraft because I'm I'm too far behind. How do you let someone that's just showing up to Planet Side not feel overwhelmed, out of their depth, start having fun? Mm -hmm. It's and, it sounds and the eternal problem task. of people of um all PvP games have this problem right where there's skill bloat yeah. and it's not it's not a planet side problem it's an it's a pvp problem um if you try to get in, into dota now good luck the yeah. average player has been playing the game for five plus years like an average yeah. player yeah uh the, the 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 hump you have to climb and you know in planet side the 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 classic way to get around this problem is just to join a, a zerg fit right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and maybe that's good for some people, but a lot of people, Planetside's a free-to-play game. Um, it it is designed to give high amount of access to fights with joint combat, with redeploy, and it tells mm -hmm. you how to do this in the tutorial. It's saying mm -hmm. you can play this solo with mm -hmm. all these other people, but can you really? Yeah. And I don't think. Um, I think. Uh, a continent like Osher, it could start changing the narrative of what planet side is. It start to, if if I'm right, right, if my optimistic interpretation of what's happening there kind of proves out over time, and the novelty of the construction being there doesn't go away, right, and if the field mm -hmm. fights don't just go away, um, and and people enjoying that experience doesn't go away. But it might all mm -hmm. go away. Yeah, it might just be a recency bias. It, that's that's my fear. Um, I will say when when I log in, Osher's not open. I'm disappointed. I'm like, oh, Me too. I'm gonna play. I'm yeah, gonna play. yeah. I want to play the right, new when stuff. When I get into Osher, yeah, exactly. And that's you know that's what most people are gonna say. Oh, it's just new. But I, I have more fun at Pommel Gardens. I have more fun when we finish a fight and that we is drive such a to weird that space. base. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's a weird base. But I mean, just climbing around those rocks is yeah. a lot of fun. 
Yeah. Um, but I have more fun when we finish a fight, and rather than me redeploying into a galaxy to the next fight, like I go and actually try to fight through the field. Yeah. You know, that, that's just more fun to me. And people are like, oh, he's just a Zerg fit leader. I mean, the reality is 90% of my time is just one IVI grinding. You yes. Know? Like that's, that's what happens to most people. Even though I love that, it's a lot of work to achieve it. You know, either you got to be the one to step up and lead or you got to participate in someone else's vision. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of work. So um, I definitely love when it happens the most, mm -hmm. but I, I fall back into the same farm trap a lot and find myself not having as much fun. Yeah. Like if you, it, that the farm trap you described, I love the way you put that because I feel that happened <laughs> to me too. And I'm not even a very good farmer. Um, yep. Well, thank you for agreeing with me. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but but, I, but it, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter if you're a 5K, you know, a 5 KPM or a 2 KPM, right? Or yeah. a 1 KPM. Like you still end up like, okay, I just got to sit at this thing and try to get as many kills as I can, right? I'm feeling so no matter the right pace now. you can do it at. Yes. And when you boil down the sandbox too much, too much, you start to lose touch with something that the game fundamentally is, that it does better than any other game. Um, the way I used to think about this is you boil the game down to like an arena shooter or a Counter-Strike. Mm -hmm. And if you've done that, mm -hmm. wouldn't you be having more fun playing that game? So why, why stay in Planet Side? And the reason is because there is this bigger thing happening. Because mm -hmm. there is this these elements of RNG, it's like, when you play Super Smash Brothers, how do you decide whether to turn items on or off? Do you know Super Smash Brothers? Do you know what I'm talking about? I do know it, and it, man, I, I gotta buy that one. because I haven't played a Smash Brothers game I'm, in probably 10 years. Yeah, but me too. It's been a long time. I know that the item thing is like, it's it, it, all the way back in the day, like, items on or off was, was always a big... Uh, all the people who like played like this wanted items off. People who played okay. like this... Well, yeah. items on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People so, that could sit back and have fun with it, right? It's it, a natural it, instinct for anyone who is trying to um, achieve, overcome, to win competitively. To try mm -hmm. to... One of the, the key things you can do competitively is to cut down on all the noise, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like, uh, one of the things I realized about my own planet side infantry play that I had ways to improve was, um, like... Uh, I think crosshair placement is how I've heard it referred to. Like literally putting your crosshair close to where an enemy might be. I used yeah. to run around with my with, with my gun pointing to the ground. And when I was mm -hmm. someone, I'd have to pick it up and point at someone's head. And then yep. someone pointed at me. I'm like, oh, of course. I'm an idiot. Why didn't I think about yeah. that? Um, yeah. I can't remember what point I was trying to make with that. Serious, I want to respect your time. So tell me how we're doing. We're, we're good. I do. I just, let's, we do have to kind of wrap it up and let's, let's just, let's schedule the next one now. And then we can, we can design. Should we the do next this, this whatever. work style? Should we, should we open our calendars and schedule the next podcast <laughs> live? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I guess, I guess I literally do actually. No, we'll do, we'll do it offline uh, then. We're not going to use the podcast okay. for that, but okay. uh, I could. But uh, I'm just saying, let's, let's do kind of find a place. Let's to put continue a the conversation. Let's, let's, we'll, we'll continue it soon in the future. That makes me happy that you want to continue the conversation because I do too. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. So where should we, so, um, is there anything else we need to say about Osher? Let, let me give my last word is to everyone, give it a chance mm -hmm. and go outside your comfort zone. Cause I think you will find some parts of it that you love for, you know, there's parts that are going to be hard for people that have gotten used to the standard gameplay loop. So give it a chance, do some weird things. Let your KPM suffer a little bit. And there are going to be some fun moments there. I promise. Yeah. That's mine. Make a fresh account so it doesn't hit your stats. And no one there you go. You. Perf perf perfect idea. Perfect idea. <laughs> yeah. So. I, yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Um, and sure. uh, so maybe we can end it on this. Like what? what? So you're making an Osher video, but what else is coming up for you, man? That's what I, I, uh, I am excited. I, I want to be more dialed in and I am just finding myself that, uh, my weekends are filling up a lot. So yeah, man, sorry for the people that I'm, I'm not churning out content the way that I'd like to, but just know it's not for a lack of enthusiasm. Just got, uh, some other good things going. Good for you, man. Well, 
So we will eagerly await whenever that that arrives, and uh, we'll definitely sit down and talk again soon. Okay, that's awesome. Dig, thanks for being our commu- community like shaman or whatever. You know just what? We all have our keeping, role. Keeping, yeah, I just <laughs> I just a do pulse what I can. Absolutely. Thanks, Sirius. Thanks, Planet yep. Mans and Ladies. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, I'll guys. You we'll see time. you on Planet Side. GG.